President Wilson said as I was coming up, that's a Morehouse man right there. <laughs> Well, he's going to have to compete because um, I'm here representing Howard University today. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and he looks like he's qualified to join us in Washington, D.C. Uh, let me um, begin by saying what a pleasure it is to join you here in this Atlanta tribute to Vincent Hardy. And I was in Colorado and had the opportunity to share a time and spirit and love with people from that region of the country and a lot of folk came from the west coast who um, joined in the celebration there and um, with a subject like Vincent Hardy you can't help but have rich uh, powerful spiritual experiences when people who were connected to him gather and that's what we had there and that's what we're going to have going to have me here already, given what the young brothers just laid down on that saxophone. Um, as I said, this is the Atlanta uh, tribute, and Vincent spent some very, probably some of the most meaningful periods of his life here in this city, relatively short um, overall. But he's here as a civil rights activist with the Mennonite Church. He's here um, as a faculty member at, uh, at Spelman College. And he's here as um, the founding director of the Martin Luther King Center for Social Change. And he's here as the founder of the Institute of the Black World. I met Vincent, um, I came to know Vincent at the Institute. But I actually met him on television at one of those uh, crisis periods in my life. Um, 1968 was a very, very hard year for me. Uh, it began with the assassination of Martin Luther King, of course, and I didn't realize it at the time, but um, after his death, I came to realize that I, all of my moral and ethical foundations rested very firmly in uh, the principles that uh, Martin Luther King lived. And with the kind of death that he suffered, um, his passing left me um, without rudder, without foundations, without any sense of direction and purpose, what to do um, with my life after that. And um, in the midst of my you know, kind of groping, I stumbled upon a television show. Um, CBS television uh, got Vincent Hardy and John Henry Clark to put together a 120 half hour program series on the history of black people called Black Heritage. And it broadcast nationally. This is in the latter part of 1968. Broadcast nationally. And everybody, black or white, who knew something about black history and black culture uh, appeared on that show. I um, started watching it and just to indicate how substantive it was. It came on at 5 and 6 o'clock in the morning, <laughs> as CBS would do. Uh, but 5 and 6 o'clock in the morning, I was right there at that television. And uh, in the course of my um, you know, sojourn with that program and with Vincent as uh, one of the leaders of it, I came to the realization that there might be some possibility of, quite frankly, me regaining my sanity by immersing myself in African and African American history. And so I packed up 20 boxes of books on black history that I had uh, been collecting over the years and shipped them to Puerto Rico and sat in the mountains of Puerto Rico for the better part of a year reading black history, trying to read myself back into sanity. And um, at the end of the year, quite frankly, at the end of the money, <laughs> I still felt like I hadn't quite made it. So I packed up and flew out to California 
and enrolled in a PhD program in the history of black people and race relations at the University of California at Berkeley. And I spent about a year there, and then my next encounter with Vincent Kay, when I had the opportunity to come to Atlanta as part of a team with uh, Dr. Andrew Billingsley, a team of graduate students, to study at this place that he had founded at the same time that he set up the, uh, the King Center called the Institute of the Black World. Now, I um, knew I wanted to go because I had seen him on this television program, but when I saw the name Institute of the Black World, I said, I got to go check this stuff out. These must be some bad brothers. I arrive, and um, the Institute of the Black World, huge sense of uh, purpose and direction and all the rest of that in two houses on the corner of uh, uh, Chestnut and Beckwood Street. But in those two houses, people of African descent, scholars and artists and uh, people of struggle of African descent came into those places. And from that foundation, uh, quite frankly, I went through a personal process of total transformation because of my relationship with that, I discovered what I came to know as my vocation. And that vocation ultimately ended up being my 27 years at the Schomburg Center and what I'm currently doing now at uh, Howard University. But my life wasn't the only one that was touched and shaped and transformed by that experience. And I want to ask, um, all of those individuals who worked at the Institute of the Black World at any point in time, if you would just stand for a minute and be recognized, because I suspect I speak for everyone. I suspect I speak for every one of them when I say that the experience was a life transforming experience. And I think that's symbolic of what Vincent meant to people wherever he went. Uh, any engagement with Vincent, intellectually, spiritually, uh, left one knowing that something was changing in yourself and that your possibilities for the future were being enhanced, no matter what kind of problems you were going through. And so I feel that um, um, Vincent Harding was, for me, really three, four maybe important things. First of all, he became my source of personal vision. Um, he and the folk at the Institute of the Black World helped to fashion a kind of lens through which I could look at the world from the perspective of people of African descent and could see the world and see myself in that world uh, in some new and uh, profoundly different ways. Second, um, Vincent gave me a job. <laughs> Actually, he gave me two, but I'll speak on the first one. The first one was um, the, um, I spent a year at the Institute and then I went back to Berkeley. I came back and I eventually ended up um, succeeding him as director of the Institute of the Black World. Um, I wasn't looking to become a director and quite frankly I was even more I tried to take off at him and Bill and Bobby and everybody else because they packed up and had it and left me holding the bag. Left a few of us, Pat Daly and myself, and a few of us trying to keep the organization going. But uh, that gave me a, a, a range of experiences that frankly prepared me for the next phase of my life. And then the second, the third thing that he gave me was um, a sense of vocation, a sense of purpose, the work that we did at the Institute said to me that there was meaningful work that I could do uh, in an institutional setting like that to advance the interests of people of African descent, to support our struggle for freedom and justice and human dignity. And that's what I ended up doing. And finally, um, Vincent was as significant in me ending up at the Schomburg Center as anybody else. Uh, the Schaumburg Center had run a search for its director, um, national search, had interviewed all the candidates, couldn't find what they were looking for. 
So they reopened the search. Vincent was on the search committee. I bumped into him one day and he said, now Howard, Howard, did you apply for the Schomburg job? I said, no. He said, well, uh, did you read the job description? I said, no. Well, he said, well, it sounds just like you. I got the job description, read it. It did sound, uh, sound just like me. I put in my application on December 31st of 1983, the last day of the second search. And as fate would have it, I was eventually chosen for that night. What I ended up doing at the Schomburg Center was simply living out and putting into practice all the stuff that I learned at the Institute. Guided by the kind of sense of purpose and vision that Vincent Hardy conveyed to me during our tenure there. And uh, as I carry out my work at the Mormon Spendorn Research Center at Howard University, I'm still guided by that sense of purpose, that sense of uh, vision, and uh, that sense of uh, vocation. Um, this stuff is not just work. It's sacred duty because it's committed to ensuring that our ancestors' struggles, A, are not in vain, and B, are never forgotten, and C, are available to future generations so that they can see more clearly what the possibilities are for their future. And I'm just honored to have had the privilege of knowing someone as um, truly extraordinary as Vincent Hardy. Quite frankly, I don't know that I've met anyone else that was quite like Vincent. Um, but whatever those qualities are, I invite each and every one of you to grab a hold of some of them. They will serve you well going forward in this life and in this world. I thank you and have a